this Japanese style pattern looks a whole lot more difficult to do than it really is. Let's get started and make it in Adobe Illustrator. I'm choosing new file and I'm going to make a file that is just 600 pixels by 600 pixels. That should be easily big enough for this process. I'll click create. Now it's important that you create things to the right size. So I would suggest that you start off with my values. If you want to double things later on, that's fine, but just make sure that everything is doubled. I'm going to the ellipse tool. I'm going to make sure that it has no fill, but it has a black stroke. I'm going to give it about a four point stroke. I'll click in this document. I'm going to create an ellipse that is 100 pixels by 100 pixels in size. Again, this is really, really important that it's this size, and so is the amount that we're about to move it. Select Object Transform and then Move. And we're going to move this. Let me just zero out this dialog. We're going to move it vertically 75 pixels. So we're going to type in 75, and I'll click Copy. So you should end up with two overlapping circles. Press Control or Command D twice so that you end up with four. We've got a lot more than we actually need for our pattern. Let's go back and choose Object Transform and then Move again. Now these values that we need are 60 for the horizontal and 40 for the vertical. Again, click Copy. Go ahead and select all of these shapes. Choose Object, Transform, and then Move. What we're going to do is double this value. So instead of 60, it's going to be 120. And this vertical is 0. And make sure you click Copy again. For good measure, you can press Control or Command D to make one further set. Let's go now and get the rectangle tool. Just click somewhere in the document and make a rectangle that is 120 pixels by 75 pixels in size. We're going to fill it with a color. Let's just go and find a better color to use for it. It doesn't have any stroke. I'm going to choose Object, Arrange and Send to Back. And now I'm just going to move it roughly into position. The reason why I've drawn this particular shape is because this is how big our pattern swatch is going to be. You can see it's really, really small. So I'm using this to not only give us an idea as to where our pattern swatch is, but also as to how much of this design we actually need to be working with. I'm going to show up my layers palette and let me just go down to the very end of this layer where this pink shape is and I'm going to lock it. I don't want it to move. Everything else is just fine. I also don't want to be able to select it because my next approach is to select over everything and start using the Live Paint Bucket tool. So I'm going to choose Object and then Live Paint and Make. I'm going over here to the Live Paint Bucket tool and I'm going to my Swatches panel to pick up black as my color. So you should see a set of three colors with black in the middle. You can double click on the Live Paint tool to make sure that your painting fills, not strokes, that you have Cursor Swatch Preview enabled and that you've got a highlight as well because that's going to show you, in my case in red, where I'm about to drop my paint. Now I'm going to drop it in these places even though it's well outside the area of my pattern. But when we come to actually prepare the pattern, it's sometimes handy to be able to see a few of these shapes so that you can just see how the pattern's going to work out. So all we're doing is filling in these little bits. They're all the exact same shape. And we're filling them with black. So just go around your circles in this sort of area and just make sure that you've got all of them filled in. I've got plenty here. I don't need anything more than that. This is a live paint shape, so we have to expand it, but don't use Object Expand. Go down here to Object Live Paint and choose this expand. It's a different one. I'm going to click away from my object right now, and let's go and get the Shape Builder tool. So I've got the Shape Builder tool here. I'm going to make sure that the fill is nothing and the stroke is nothing on my Shape Builder tool. Let's go back and select over all of these shapes back to the Shape Builder, and this is where we need to focus. What we're going to do is we're going to come from the top of this circle. We're going to drag down and to the left, and then we're going to come back to this shaded area and just drag over to the right. 
We're going to come to this circle here. We're going to come from this space down and to the left and then to the right. We're going to come to this circle here. You can see it's missing a bit, but that's fine. It's supposed to be. We're going to come down across the middle of the circle, what was the middle of the circle, to the left and then across to the right. Here, this circle here, down and to the left and across to the right. This circle here, down and to the left and across to the right. This circle here, it's missing a few bits, but it's still a circle, down and to the left across and to the right. Now, it's not complete at the bottom, but that's fine because it doesn't need to be. Let's just click away from our shape and make sure that everything is looking correct. We want everything over the top of the pink box to be correct. Now, there are bits of the pattern here that are not functioning and are not correct. There's a bit of the pattern here that's not correct. But you know what? It's not part of this pink area. So provided you've done enough work to get your pattern functioning in this area here and that it looks pretty much like this, you're good to go. If you really, really want to continue, you can do so. I'm just going to finish this one off down to the left and to the right. Down to the left and to the right. But I'm fine over this area. I don't need to do anything more. Let's go to the Layers palette and select this group that has all the objects on it. We're going to expand that, so we'll choose Object and then Expand and click OK. And then we want to join everything together because right now we've got a whole heap of bits and pieces. So we're going over here to the Pathfinder, which you can get to by choosing Window and Pathfinder, and click here on the Unite option. And that just unites everything together. Let's unlock this pink layer and drag it above our group of shapes. We'll select absolutely everything, the pink shape and what is there of our pattern. We'll go back to the Pathfinder and we're going to click here on Crop. And this is what you should be left with. That's all. That's the pattern. We're going to select over this, go to the Swatches panel and we'll drag and drop it into the Swatches panel. I'm going to move this just out of the way because we don't need it any longer. Let's go and test our pattern. My document was 600 by 600. Let me just square the rectangle up over the artboard. Let's click on the fill and let's drop in our pattern. As you can see, it's absolutely perfect. This pattern looks so much more complicated than it actually is to create. You just need to keep your wits about you. Make sure that with the first time you do it, you use my measurements. If you're going to make it a second time and you want it to be larger, well, you probably don't need to make it larger because these are vector shapes. But if you do want to start out with larger shapes, just double everything. Double your document size, double your circle size, double every single one of the moves that you make, double the size of your pattern swatch and you should be good to go. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.